Well, here we are in letter number four. And in this letter, screw tape is going to direct Wormwood to sabotage the patient's prayer life. For many people, it's hard enough praying, and maybe it's uh, an intimidating thing to hear that the devils are actually working to sabotage your prayer life. But again, this is one of these things where we can use a reverse strategy by having an idea of what it is that the devils are up to, what it is that they're doing, we can have a better idea of how to carry out an effective prayer life. Now, the ideal, screw tape says, is that this guy would stop praying altogether. But for a new convert, that's not going to be likely. It's not going to be likely you're just going to get him to stop praying. But what you can do is get him to pray in ways that are going to be ineffective or going to be unhelpful, and maybe this will wear him down to the point that he gives it up. First, a distinction. Screw tape says that in the prayer life, there are people who are beginners and there are people who are more advanced. And we tend not to perhaps think that way. We think prayer is prayer is prayer. But like anything else in life, if this is something that you do on a regular basis, uh, there's going to be ways in which you do it better later on than you do it earlier. So, for example, when C.S. Lewis uh, was a young boy, uh, and he talks about this in his, in his autobiographical book, Surprised by Joy. He talks about how it is that he got it into his head that when you pray, you're supposed to be thinking about it. That's true. But then he would worry that, hey, if I've been saying my prayers and I haven't been thinking about it, are these now worthless prayers? He didn't have somebody to direct him and tell him, um, do what you can, and if you aren't quite thinking about it or if your mind is wandering, try to do better the next time. No, Lewis would try to pray and pray and pray, always looking, always scrupulous about whether he was doing it in the right way. It got to the point that here's somebody who's 10, 11, 12 years old that he just dreaded going to bed at night and saying his night prayers because he would keep going over and over them making sure that he was thinking about it when he was doing it. That's something that you can do badly. Prayer is something you can do badly. And you need sometimes direction. You need some people helping you out, more experienced Christians who are going to help you pray in the right way. So what does Screwtape recommend? Have him react against the parrot-like prayers that he had from childhood. And in other words, something that he had as a beginner and make him go to something that's more advanced, that's way out of his league in terms of what it is that he's able to do. As a child, probably he learned the Our Father, probably he learned the, the, uh, 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 the Lord is my shepherd. There are probably some basic prayers that he learned. And that's, that's not bad. That's not something that you ditch. You can go beyond that, but that you are given a script to pray is entirely healthy. Think about the New Testament where the apostles come to Jesus and they ask him, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And this is where he gives them the Our Father. So in the, in early on, we have parroted prayers. You can go beyond those, but they're an important place to start. What you want to do with the patient, screw tape says, is get him to seek something that's way advanced, something that you might call the prayer of silence. Get him to seek something advanced. Get him to seek something that might traditionally be called a prayer of silence. That is, you don't have a script. You don't have a psalm or, a, or, or the Our Father with which you're working. But you have a kind of inner dialogue with God. There's a kind of union, a mystical union that you have with God that doesn't need words. It may take a very long time, years of practice to get there. Well, if you can get the beginner to seek something that advanced, ultimately it's going to be empty and frustrating. Screwtape refers to uh, a poem of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, where basically what Coleridge is expressing in this poem is that I, I don't pray by, by using set words or by kneeling, but merely composed my soul to love. In other words, some kind of emotional or sentimental state is what you're seeking to achieve as opposed to following some kind of discipline. And 
That's something that Screwtape says is great. This is really what we want because there are a couple of things that are going to happen. First, he's not going to kneel down, get down on his, on his knees and, and have his body reflect what should be going on in his soul. There's a great line in here where what Screwtape tells Wormwood is this, you must remember what they constantly forget, that they are animals and whatever their bodies do affects their souls. So position, bodily position, matters in prayer. And that's why throughout the scriptures you will see that people kneel or prostrate themselves when they're trying to express their feelings about God or their, when they're trying to unite with God. It will take a certain form. The other piece of uh, advice, crucial piece of advice that Screwtape gives is make him manufacture feelings. Make him think that what he's trying to do in prayer is create an emotional state. And this is great advice because, of course, prayer may involve the emotions, but it's not all about manufacturing feelings. Your feelings in prayer may actually be the result of how much sleep you got or what you had for breakfast. Uh, prayer is, is, is something that you know to be effective really in the long run and not in the short run. It's not something that you know immediately by a feeling that descends on you. It's something that you know in over time by whether or not you're becoming more loving toward your neighbor, whether you're more generous, whether you're more patient. That's a way of understanding of prayer being fruitful. But if you can get the patient to think that some kind of emotional state is what it's all about, you get him locked up inside his own head. You get his spiritual life and his faith life to be something that happens in him as opposed to something that really is something that happens out there, uniting him with God and uniting him in love with his neighbor. Finally, a piece of advice that Screwtape gives, again, that's helpful for us. Have this guy create a kind of image of God that he prays to so that he's no longer uniting himself with God, who God really is, but he's created a kind of an imaginary God. He's created his own picture of God. And obviously, you can create pictures of God that are really not all that helpful in your spiritual life. You can make, turn God into a kind of senile old grandfather, a Santa Claus who just hands out presents, just hands out what you want. Uh, the, the very thing we need is the ability to pray to God that he will make him known to us, that we'll be aware of our limitations in knowing him. Think of the prayer of the blind man, the Gospel of Luke, Lord, that I may see. And that's, of course, what we should pray. That's the way that we should pray. But what Screwtape is recommending is that we create a God after our own image, our own likeness, so that we're no longer united to the God who's really there. Well, in the next lecture, what we'll do is look at how it is that screw tape is directing Wormwood now that World War II has broken out and the ways in which uh, the war can be useful to the devils.